Okay, so we've got the uh, line work in the site plan or the roof plan that I've been working on um, starting to come together. Uh, so you can see there it's at least got the um, outline of all those main buildings and most importantly I've got the roof of blocks B which is here and block C to the left drawn uh, as accurately as I need them to be. Uh, and so now I want to go ahead and make another file for my floor plan. So I'm going to make a new AutoCAD file just on the main menu, going to new. Uh, you can choose the drawing option from there or, or you can just click where it says new, it does the same thing. And then I'm going to leave it on ACAD ISO which is a good default for anyone working with metric. Uh, measurements in AutoCAD. Yeah. Yeah. So ISO is just International Standards Organization, and uh, when you see that in an American program, it usually means uh, metric. Uh, so I'll just maximize that. And so now I want to insert the the file I've been working on into this new one. Uh, so on the uh, insert tab, I'm just looking for an external references button. I um, so used to typing the command in that I forgot. No, yeah, it's attach. Okay, so you can click on the attach button, or the shortcut is xref. So just the letter x r e f, and that's usually what people call these things. So it means external reference, but uh, xref's the common term. And once you type xref enter, you'll get this little um, palette that comes up. And at the top, you'll see there's a little button that has attached DWG. And if you click on the down arrow there, you get some other options. But I'm going to go for the top one anyway, attached DWG. And then you can choose, I'm just going to make sure I've got the right one. So I'm going to choose the AutoCAD file. It doesn't hurt to check the path. Sometimes you'll be in a different folder to, uh, to what you think you are. So it's worth checking that things are where they should be. And yep, so I'm working off the U drive. So you won't see these files. And uh, then once you click open, you'll get a set of options. So you can see on the left you've got some options that you wouldn't have seen before uh, that you don't have with blocks, attachment and overlay. Here you can just leave it on attachment. And then uh, scale and rotation you have just the same as, as you would when you're inserting a block. And then insertion point as well. And I'm going to turn that off. Specify on screen. So nothing specified on screen which means when I click OK is going to be done. It might take it a second. There we are. Because there's nothing to specify on the screen. And so I'll try zooming out and you'll see that common problem when you try to zoom out with the wheel. Often it only goes so far. So when that happens just make sure there are no other commands running. So it should say type a command down the bottom. And if you double click with the wheel that will zoom extents and regenerate the drawing essentially so that it'll uh, zoom out for you. That's a common thing in AutoCAD, it's to do with the way it's been set up for years. These things called limits, but uh, these days just doing a zoom extents, which is what you get when you double click with the wheel, will uh, fix it. So I can see all of the things that I had in the um, original file. And now I want to make a change, just so you can see the point of uh, having an XREF. I'm going to go back to the original drawing, and so with the newer versions of AutoCAD, you've got these tabs up the top, which let you switch between the open drawings that you've got. Okay, so I, had, I don't have my uh, image on a different layer yet. I've still got it on layer zero, which you can see comes up when I hover over the edge. And so, I'm going to go back to the Home tab and Layer Properties. And I'll make a new layer. 
So these are the sorts of things hopefully you're pretty comfortable with in AutoCAD and I'll call this uh, say image, something simple. Change the colour just to something random and uh, that way I'll know when it's on that layer. Close the panel. And then to change the image to a different layer, you need to click on the border to select it, but that'll give you a new tab that gives you options for changing your image. I don't want to use any of those, so I'm going to leave, it's, leave the image selected, it's still selected there, uh, and then go back to the Home tab, so I can see the Layers palette or the layer drop down there, and, uh, and then I can choose my new image layer, and I can tell straight away that it's changed layers because the borders change colours. Right, so now I'm going to look in my new drawing and I can see that the image still hasn't changed. The border is still the same colour, so I know it hasn't changed layers yet. And the reason is that in the original file, I haven't saved those changes. Okay, so that's the basic idea. When you work with XRefs, you need to save any changes you want moved across from the original file to have them come up in your uh, new file. And so I'll just click Save up the top. And this is really just an, as an example. You could make different changes to see, uh, see this happening. And so I'll go to uh, my new drawing and then you'll get a message down the bottom that uh, gives you the option of reloading the, uh, the reference. So there you can see it tells me reload and more DCE site. I'll click on that blue uh, underlined link and that'll bring the change across. So I can see there, there's my new colour for the layer. So I know I've changed uh, the image to a different layer. And then I can go into the layer palette there and notice that the layers have, uh, have the same name, but then they've also got the file name added to each of them. And so that's one of the other main concepts with uh, XREFs, that you get all the layers from the original file, uh, but just with that file uh, prefix. So it makes it fairly easy to manage. I can just go there and turn that image off in this file only. So it's still there in the original file, but in my new file, it's turned off. So now I'll better save that file. So I'm just going to do a save as. And I'll call it um, earn more DCE. Well, this is really going to be the ground floor plan. So ground should be fine. Okay, so now I'm going to add a few more lines and I know that's really hard to see on the projector. So I'll, in this file, change that layer colour to something as bright as possible. It's yeah, it's a bit of a pain sometimes working with layer colours. That should have changed. But let's go back and do it in here. Ah, oh, what layer have I done them on? Have I done... Oh, that roof outline. Okay, maybe it wants me to do a region. What's going on there? Ah, okay, so that's clear for me. Uh, I've somehow set a, uh, an option there. It's a good thing for you to see as well. Because I was drawing with magenta colours anyway, um, I didn't notice it. But you can see up here I've got this magenta option set for the colours. And that's um, something people often do, choosing the colour here from the colour selector, which in AutoCAD you probably don't want to do very often. So what I'm going to do to fix that is select all of these lines, and then change the colour up there to by layer. So we'll notice how now all of those lines have picked up the colour of the layer. So we just highlight everything? Yep. Just made a window around all of the line work. Yep. And then change the colour option there to by layer. Oh, by layer, so we'll correct it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And so that's something you should always do if you notice that your objects aren't changing colour when you change the layer. Just set them all to by layer. Yeah, yeah. Because they should all be set to by layer anyway. Oh, you've got a lasso selection. So just... Uh, how did you get that turned on? Just, just click somewhere again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an option. Oh, yeah, you can still just go around and select things. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'll check how to turn that off, but it's one of the options down the bottom. I'm sure. So, um, so you probably won't have that problem, but if you do, then you know how to fix it. Uh, so notice how back in this file, the colours still haven't changed, and I've lost the message that tells me uh, to update my file. But notice this little um, icon that looks like a paper clip on a piece of paper. And when it's got a save change that hasn't come across, that'll go orange. So if you click there, it'll bring up the XRF dialog and you can right click and, uh, sorry, right click on the file, which is the second one. The first one's the uh, the file that I'm in, the second one is the site that I'm trying to uh, update. So when you right click on that, you can choose reload manually. Okay, now the colour still hasn't changed. Yeah. Which is a painful thing. What I'm going to do is detach this and reload it. You shouldn't have to do this, but uh, Sometimes it just makes things easier. So when you right click on the, um, the file, you've got the option to detach. And then I can just choose attach DWG again and in more DCE site. And maybe I didn't save my changes. That's probably all it is. Okay, so saving. There you go. Reload. Ah, oh, here we go. So now it's picked up the colour. And that's another little quirk about XRFs. The layers, even though they come from the original file, they become unique once they're in the new file. So notice this colour here in the original file is that cyan kind of colour. But in the new file, it's the colour that I've set it to because I've adjusted it. So there we go, that's what I wanted to happen. Now if I change that colour, these will change here. And this one really just to make it easy for you to see on the projector. And so then I want to turn the uh, image off. So I'll do that. And add in some extra line work. So I want yet another layer. And I'm going to make the layer um, just walls, I think, is fine. And I'll make the colour orange, make it the current layer. Right, so because I went and just um, did a quick measure on the eaves before, I know that they're 600 mil. I'll close this. So I'm going to offset 600 from the outside of the gutter. Oh, now sorry, because I'm XREFT, I can't do that. Um, in this file. So what I need to do instead is join some new lines. And so there are all sorts of tricks you can use. People often wonder uh, when you have been using AutoCAD for a while how to do things like start a line a certain distance from another point. And so here you might be wanting to draw a new line that starts 600 mil above this corner point. Now, there are all sorts of ways of doing that. There, I can think of at least three ways of doing that. But uh, sometimes it's not worth using those complicated options. So a simpler way is just to draw a line from that point, from that corner point, so I don't have to show you all those different options, and uh, come up, make sure it's uh, going at 90 degrees. It'll come up 600 mil. And then I'm going to go across to the left, again, making sure it's a straight line. Just finish it somewhere. This is this is the wall. And so then I'll delete the original line that I drew from the corner. 
so like I said, you can use things like the from option and there are all sorts of um, really fairly easy options actually now with the extensions and other things like that to start it set out from a certain point, but uh, but again, worry about those things later. Oh, because it's an XREF. Okay. So it's like a block. And and yeah, exactly, yeah. So here we're just trying to get a line that's 600 mil inside the gutter on both sides, and I'll stretch that out a little bit, and it'll be 600 inside here as well. So again, I can just draw a line from the corner, come across to the left and type in 600. And then again, I'll come down and just draw a certain distance so that it's a straight line. And then again, I can use something like fillet to join those lines together. Delete my original line. And I know I've got the right distance. And so then again, the same from the top. So I'm going to draw another line from, again, from the outside of the gutter. Down 600. And then across to the left. It'll still snap to those objects uh, from the roof plan. So I can draw perpendicular and things like that. And now again, I can delete this one. And then one more line. 600 again. And then coming down, we'll worry about the other walls later. So notice I'm just cleaning up the drawing as I go, though it's just good practice to do that. Uh, and so now we've got these other images. Uh, so that's level two. We want, uh, here we go, building uh, B level one, sorry. So building B level one is the one I'm going to start with. And so, uh, let's see which file. Okay, so now, uh, again, you can use that same attach dialog box if you want to. So you can just click on attach again, or you can type image and uh, oh, that's funny it's gone in straight into uh, prompting me for a um, for an image file because uh, well just the way it's set up and I don't think it'll oh yeah sorry all image files is fine as an option there so when you click on that button just remember you have to choose the uh, the file type first if you type either xref or image, they both do the same thing. Then in that panel that comes up, choosing from the list there, uh, basically it's the same operation. So you can choose attach image. And it basically brings up the same dialog box. And so here we go, I've got the uh, drawings here. And well, just so it's clear to you, I'll do it from the same place you'll be getting it, which is on the P drive, to design, CAD 4, plan images and there we've got block B uh, level 1. I should have called it ground floor but it's a bad habit. And uh, so here again I'll turn scale off. Insertion point uh, it's neither here nor there. I'll, I'll turn it off here as well. And then OK and I can go looking for the image and it'll be really small. So there it is. Okay, so this time I'll delete that and just to show you a couple of little tricks when you're doing that, this is the same as what you did with the um, satellite image before. Okay, I'll go and insert it again and it's uh, in the list already. So one trick would just be to attach it from here but it doesn't hurt to go and uh, browse and choose it again. So what I'll do this time is I'll type in a scale factor. And so we know it's probably got to be at least 100 times bigger than it is. And this will just make it easier to, to work with. So I'll type in 100 there for the scale and then OK. And it's still really small. So let's try that and let's try a thousand. So I right click on it this time and just choose attach and this time put a thousand as the scale factor. That's getting a bit better, still not good enough so I'll just uh, try 10,000 which is pretty close to what we had last time and that's still going to be scaled up but it's much easier to work with when we've got a bigger size. 
So when you select the image again, so I'll just again click on either the edge of it to select it or make a window around it. And it'll take you to that image tab. So you just have to remember to go back to the home tab to get all the tools that you, that you might want. And so here I'm going to use the move button just to pick it up and move it a bit closer to where it needs to go in the drawing. I'll have to move it again afterwards. And then I think it's upside down. Yep, so it is. Okay, so I'm sure you'll know, having walked down there a hundred times, um, the corridors on the uh, the north side, so which is up here. So we're going to rotate this 180 degrees. So if I select it again, go to home, click rotate. The base point can be just in the middle or something, and then the rotation angle is going to be 180. Mm -hmm. Flip it around. And then I can look at getting the right size. So we know between those two main walls should be the distance that we've established with those uh, orange lines. So if I measure that, it's going to be, let's see, the vertical measurement is 10,300. Don't worry about the distance there, that's the diagonal distance, I just care about the delta Y. Okay, so it should be 10,300. I'll measure now what it is. So going from the outside of the wall here to this time I'm going to do a um, uh, vertical measurement. And so going vertically at 90 degrees, it's 1710 we'll say. Okay, so that gives us the scale factor. All right, so with the scale command, select the image, then enter the base point uh, can be anywhere so I'm going to click somewhere maybe on the side of the image just so it scales uh, from what I'm looking at That'll do. or even maybe the center of the image is a good one here or close to the center it's up to you the base point doesn't really matter because you'll have to move it again anyway okay so then again to work out your scale factor it's simply the number you want it to be over the number it is. So in this case 10,300 divided by 1710. We don't have to do any of that moving the decimal across this time because we're working with bigger numbers because I scaled the image up initially. So 10,300 over 1710 is the scale factor. So 10,300 over or forward slash 1710. Enter. And there we go, zooming out. Uh, I can tell visually it's, it's pretty good. But as I'm panning, uh, the image is disappearing and I can see the lines, but when I stop uh, and the image comes back, I can't see the lines anymore. So I'm going to start by making a layer for my uh, image again, which I can just call image again because the layers that have come from the other file have their own name and the colour I'll just make again something different so that it stands out do the same as the other one and then clicking on the border just like before back to the home tab and I can change the layer but notice I still can't see the lines so there's another option in AutoCAD, when you right click with anything that's selected, you can then go to draw order. And that's what determines uh, the order in which you see things in AutoCAD. Uh, so it's not like Photoshop where layers get stacked in the order that you have them in your layer, man uh, yeah, your layer manager. Uh, in AutoCAD the layers don't make any difference to the order that you see things. Uh, and so you've got a separate system for that and it's, it's draw, draw order. Okay, so with this image selected again, once I go to draw order, I can then go centre back and now I can see my lines. 
Alright, so then I can select the image. Then I've got to keep going back to the home tab to get the, the buttons there. I'm going to click the move button. And this time, well, I've got a good um, reference point there. If I can maybe just try and get the middle of this, uh, well, oh, sorry, I'll get that centered afterwards. But I'm just going to start with the edge of this wall and then just take that up to a point on my orange line and check firstly that I've got this scale properly. So you can see there that the orange line at the bottom and the orange line at the top line up with the, uh, the image. And now because we've got this uh, nice projection here, we can just visually, to begin with, I think, um, again, making sure I select the image uh, to move it, uh, try and find the middle of that, uh, that projection and that should line up with the, the ridge. So maybe I didn't quite get the middle, I'll just do that again. So move, and then again, just select the ridge. So there'll be other things that we can use as references as well. But that's, oh, here we go. So this wall, that's a really good one. They do have, I was worried they didn't have that, but they've got this. So here, well, you can see that the, uh, like I said, the drawing, it's got most of the elements, but I wouldn't be relying on it for measurements. Like a lot of drawings that you'll see, you'd be surprised how inaccurate they are. And we know it's out because we've traced it off a satellite image, which has got, it, it's got to have the right proportions because it's a real thing, it's a photo. And uh, so, if I follow the drawing here, I could, and move this wall back to the left so it lines up with the point here where the wall is. Uh, but then this will be going further to the left and that will be further out. So I'm going to make a compromise. This drawing is wrong in some respect, but I'm just going to say where it is, that's, that's pretty well close enough. And in fact, maybe, sorry, I will move it slightly because this wall you'd assume is centred within the building. You'd assume that, well, no, sorry, I was going to say centred within in this projection, but no, it's not, because if we move that again to the, uh, to the left, then this is going to be off by more. So, uh, no, so I think I'll just leave that as it is, that's close enough. And uh, so that's going to give us a pretty good basis for drawing some lines uh, for the other walls in AutoCAD and then taking that into Revit. So even at the point that it's at, I can link that into Revit. I might do um, another video for that though, so I'll save this as it is and give you some time to do that. But if you are stuck with something to do after you've uh, done all this setup, then you can just keep drawing some lines for those internal walls. And so I'm going to say the wall thickness should be, seven, uh, should be about 300. So 250, in, in reality, a double brick wall is 270, but they'd be render, and um, so, and these are maybe uh, more heavy duty walls than you'd have typically anyway. So I think 300 is a good basic measurement, and that'll tie in with uh, Revit as well. So I can offset 300 from this line to begin with, and that looks, that looks good enough. And you could probably make all those internal walls uh, 300 as well, because they'll have, a lot of them will have render both sides, and so they'll be close enough to 300. Even though, well, they're probably solid brick on the internal walls actually, so they'd be more like 250, but uh, that's getting a bit picky at this stage. I think we can just say, make it all 300. Let's see what that, yeah, see they've drawn them pretty close to that sort of in two minds. No, well let's say, sorry, just so you don't have to change it, let's say 250 for the internal walls and, and 300 for the external. Just so there's less to do later. So, again just with offset and uh, again this is just good practice with those basic commands. Offset, fill it, trim and extend and you can do pretty much everything you need for these floor plans and they shouldn't take very long at all. So there we are, just going along like that and you'll pretty quickly get that layout done. 
And don't forget to save your files, so I'll just finish that video.